Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. Can you guess why we're here? Yeah, so this is an alarm clock, and uh, it's missing the battery door. It's my daughter's. Of course, she has no idea what happened to the door. Nobody does. And uh, I actually didn't expect to have to design this. Um, this is a really popular alarm clock. Uh, it's an RCA RCD30-A. And uh, I looked on Thingiverse, I looked on printables, I even did just a Google search for uh, the model number of this, or even just RCD30 with the letters STL, and I can't find anything. Feel free to correct me down in the comments if you guys find anything, but I don't think anyone's actually designed a battery door uh, for this thing. And of course the challenge is, I don't know what the battery door looks like. You know, I, uh, I probably put this battery in here, and I'm sure I clicked the door on when I set this up for her, but... Uh, I don't remember what it looks like, and it is a bit tricky for a couple of reasons. You know, we have a curve here. It's not the end of the world. We've got two holes here. I'm assuming that's probably where some teeth went into. Uh, but the tricky part is, if we want to be true to the original design, this guy is going to be thin. Uh, the difference between this face here and this step down here isn't much. Let me grab the digital caliper. One point four nine, so I imagine that's probably one point five millimeter. And in addition to our two spots down here, which uh, look like they're about probably eight and a half. Well, I guess we want to measure from this outside edge. Yeah, it looks like the center of them is ten millimeters out from that edge. Uh, this will be tricky up here. I'm guessing there must have been a piece that locked in here, and that was probably like a compliant mechanism, just a simple one where the plastic would kind of act as like a spring uh, to lock down in there. So we'll have to design that guy pretty thin as well so it flexes. I think PLA will be fine for this, and it should give us the flexibility and the strength that we need for this. So uh, go see what I can come up with. All right, and here's the design that I came up with for this. And it actually didn't end up being too hard. Uh, the trickiest part was just figuring out the correct arc here following the, the, uh, the back of the alarm clock. So I drew that face first, and what I did is I just did a couple test prints with this extruded up like a couple millimeters, and then just matched it against the alarm clock until I had that arc the way I wanted it. Uh, in running that test print to get that arc right, I also realized that the best way to print this guy would be standing up like this. It might seem really awkward to do that at first, but I think we can make it work uh, with some tree supports. So originally my thought when I looked at the back of the alarm clock was, well, we'll just have this face down, right? I was kind of imagining, you know, a rougher version of this design in my head and thinking, well, there's gonna be, the, the biggest part of this is gonna be a nice flat face, so that'll go against the bed and I'll just deal with the supports uh, for this part that would rise up off the bed. You know, it's not, a, it's not a big piece. It'd be a bit of a pain to clean up and make it look nice. But again, it's so small, uh, post-processing, it still wouldn't be that bad. But I didn't consider two things. Uh, first of all, this piece here, our little spring mechanism that's going to lock this guy in place, has to protrude past that face. Uh, if it doesn't protrude past that face, there'd be no way to get this off. Uh, we need it to protrude by just a little bit. And you can see it, it only protrudes by maybe you know, half a millimeter down here, but then angles up so that we can get, you know, a fingernail or a screwdriver or whatever in there to, to, uh, to release this guy. And on top of that, if we did print with this face down, uh, our layer lines would be in this direction. So imagine we had a layer line right here, right? Well, the force on this guy, when we, when we take this on and off, is going to be between this face and this attachment point here, because this guy's gonna be bending in and pushing this face against the alarm clock. Well, that doesn't bode too well for having a layer line there. This guy is gonna crack apart uh, in use. Maybe not, you know, we'd probably get it in place before it cracked apart, but I don't think it'd be too long for this world uh, for changing the battery. If we print this guy standing up, uh, our layer lines are gonna be in this direction. And I can't think of any way that we'd put force on this guy, in normal use at least, uh, that would break it apart with layer lines along that direction. Uh, like I said, it's gonna be a little tricky to slice. I think we can do it with tree supports, but I think if we do print this standing up, uh, it's gonna be plenty strong, even only being that one and a half millimeters thick. So let's, uh, let's shift over to the slicer and see what we can come up with. 
All right, here we are in Bamboo Studio, and to be fair to the slicer, it also auto-oriented this in the uh, standing up direction like this. So let's uh, let's not change anything. Let's just uh, let's just set our layer height and slice it and see what happens. Okay, well we actually don't have supports on, so that's not going to work. Turn on supports. All right, so we've got a giant brim, which I understand why it's doing that. This is. Uh, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, place for this to stick down to the bed on its side profile here. It's probably going a little bit overkill with the brim, but I'm not going to mess with the brim. Um, I think I'm going to tweak the supports, though. These are regular supports. I think tree supports are going to be a lot better. Let's just check our support settings. Yeah, so let's go to tree threshold angle. I don't think it really matters for this design, but we'll make it 45. And we only want supports from the Build plate. Let's try that. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Let's make sure our trees are away from our object. Yeah, that's the other thing with standard supports because the standard support isn't going to shift over like a tree branch like the tree supports do. Uh, they end up really close to the object, sometimes close enough to it that it'll actually weld uh, to it. Now, in PLA, supports usually break off pretty easy, but I think these tree supports are going to be the way to go. So. Let's fire it up, see what happens. All right, I put some shop towels down so we don't get the underside of our sheet all messed up. And uh, this looks like it came out pretty good. Uh, definitely still stuck to the bed with that uh, giant brim. Let's see if we can get it off. Of course, that brim itself isn't going to pop off, and I'm just trying to release the layers that... Oh, actually it is. It stayed attached to the print. So, peel this guy off. And our tree supports... Just giving everything a good look here before we break it apart. All right, definitely not touching the print. This one looks like it'll break off easier. Let's see. Yep, it came right off. Nice and clean where it was touching, but there is some stringing. You guys see that? There's some stringing down in there inside of our spring part. Spring definitely has some give to it. I'm trying not to block the light here. Let's see if we get this one off without breaking our our little locking teeth. Tops off. Kind of rocking it back and forth a little bit and that looks good. I don't actually even really see anything to clean up other than the remains of our brim. Uh, stuck down here on the bottom face and grab something to clean that up. All right, that looks good. Let me get this stuff out of the way and we'll see if it fits. Oh, by the way, the sheet that I'm using in my X1C now is this gold one from uh, Bamboo Labs, but I wasn't originally using this sheet. In fact, when I bought the X1C, as I think they still come with now, it came with like uh, a two-sided sheet, a cold plate, an engineering plate, and then like an extra sticker. And I missed having a textured sheet for that machine, but I didn't want to buy the Bamboo one because at the time, their sheets were not so well reviewed. Uh, you know, issues with everything from, you know, quality of the sheets to uh, adhesion on the sheets. So I steered clear of that and I had picked up this third party one. And in fact, I mentioned a couple videos back that I was using a third party sheet and was really happy with it. And I was going to share it with you guys in an upcoming video. Well, uh, I tried to, uh, tried to get you guys a giveaway. Actually, uh, I reached out to this company. I, I paid, first of all, I paid for the sheet, you know, full retail. I bought it direct from them. I'll put the name up on the screen. Uh, even those extra letters there, I think it's pronounced the king. Um, but I reached out to him and I said, hey, I see you guys make sheets for the Prusa Mark III as well. I'm really happy. Picked up one of your sheets for my X1C. Super happy with it. Would you be interested in maybe sending me one for the Prusa Mark III? 
I'll review it on the channel, keep that one for myself, and then send me one for bamboo as well. I already have one, so I don't need that. I'll do a giveaway on the channel. Just, I'll just give it away to someone that comments on the video or someone that likes the video, whatever. And uh, they wrote back you know, pretty quickly and said, yeah, as long as you're willing to share the link to actually buy the sheet, we'd be happy to do that. And I thought, hey, it's win-win. I you know, had already bought it. I know I like it. So I was pretty sure how the review was going to go. I can't see why it wouldn't work well on the Prusa Mark III. And uh, you guys would get a free sheet. Well, they ghosted me. I heard nothing for weeks, and I wrote them back, and I said, hey, I never you know, got anything. Um, you know, do you need any other information from me? I'd already give them, given them my address and everything, and they just totally ghosted me, never wrote me back. So I do like the sheet. I don't really have anything against the company. I don't know why they, they just stopped writing me back. Uh, but when I started using the sheet in the P1S, uh, the gold, the, you know, like the new Bamboo Lab, you know, gold textured sheet, I was really happy with it in that machine. And so far, everyone else seems to be really happy with these new gold sheets as well. Uh, they also do support the LiDAR in the X1C. So does this one, but only because they printed their own labels for it and just said, hey, it works. And, you know, it did mostly work. I did have a few weird extrusion issues in some prints, but for the most part, it did work. The only downside to a third-party sheet on these machines is uh, you've got to put custom machine code in for the plate if it's not the same uh, thickness or, well, I guess the thickness doesn't really matter, but if it's not the same depth of texture. So their, you know, like their cold plate or the engineering sheet don't have anywhere near as much texture on them as this. And this has far more, or the, the texture is far deeper than either the original Bamboo Labs textured sheet or their new ones. So if you try and print with this sheet or uh, many of the third party alternatives, it's not gonna lay down enough material uh, to fill all those gaps in the texture. And you'll have you know, not only adhesion issues, but you're gonna have issues with the, you know, the finish of your, your bottom layer. So they have a snippet of code you can insert to use this, and I never had any problem with it, but I gotta say it's a lot easier just to use the bamboo sheets and their presets. Uh, this one was also not supplied. I bought this with my own money, and I've used it for, well, I've been using it in the P1S now, and probably at two dozen prints at least already on that machine, and I've got, I think, five or six prints on the X1C with it. New issues, I think out of six prints, one, it, told me they couldn't use the LiDAR data. I don't know why. I don't know if the lighting in the room changed or what. It laid down, you know, the, uh, the strips just like this, but then it said it couldn't use the LiDAR data and it just ignored it uh, and went on with a print as if it didn't have the, uh, uh, the pressure advance uh, calculation in it. But I'll keep you guys posted, but very happy with the, uh, the new style uh, bamboo texture sheet so far. All right, let's see if she fits. Uh, first of all, our teeth. Yep, they lock in nicely. Could probably be a little bit longer. Um, well, you know what? They're swinging down. Okay, yeah, as soon as I start to swing down a little bit, I can't push it out of place. If I'm up here, I can kind of force it up out of place. So they could possibly be a little bit longer, but I think they'll work. And let's see, does our snap work? Well, it doesn't snap shut if I push from here. See if I push from here, yeah. Okay, so if I push from there, it snaps shut. And oh, actually the, uh, the fit is really good on the outside. This is totally flush with the, uh, with the clock. Um, see if I can hold it here that you guys can see that. It's like perfectly flush with the back of the clock. A Little bit of movement in this direction. Probably just need to increase the length of this face by a little bit, or just increase the the size of our this mechanism here. So maybe just increase the size of this a little bit. I, I'm not going to change it because it's good enough. I mean, it's a it's a battery door on an alarm clock. It's definitely not coming off. Yeah, so it's definitely not coming off on its own. I mean, I was actually really hitting that thing pretty hard. It is, it's not coming off on its own. If you drop this thing on the floor, it probably is gonna come off, but uh, otherwise it's gonna stay on there. And uh, I can get it on and off with just my fingernail. So I'm calling that a win. Yeah, we could probably nitpick, uh, increase the length of these little teeth down here, make these a little bit longer and drag this end of our spring over a little bit this way just to tighten it up, but I think that's pretty good. I'm happy with it. 
All right, guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop this week. If this is your first time on the channel, I do a new functional print every single Friday. Always give away all the STLs for free. There's nothing to buy. Uh, we don't do like, you know, multicolor benches or anything like that. It's all functional prints or um, something to do with functional printing. And, you know, sometimes it's replacement parts that are, you know, pretty dead simple for stuff like this. Other times it's, uh, you know, designs that extend the functionality or improve the functionality of something. And sometimes we do stuff that's just totally from scratch designs. So if you're into that sort of thing, uh, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday. Sure, now you're staying on there.